Hey, this is GTV Slayer from TheClassicGamer.com doing a report for South Florida Magic on the top 10 commons from the Fate Reforged pre-release. Um, if you excuse me, I have a cold, but let's get started. An honorable mention goes to Lotus Path Jin and Jeskai Sage. The prowess ability on both of these cards is amazing with white-blue control and having a 2-3 flyer for 4. Um, is normally pretty good, but with the prowess ability, it makes it crazy good. You can attack, get a pump to do extra damage, you could enchant to get more damage. Number 10, Goblin Heal Cutter. A 3 2 for 4, not too bad. With the dash ability, a 3 2 for 3 that gets haste and can also make your opponent not be able to block with one of their creatures is very significant. Um, you can have a face down creature that you turn face up late game and with the dash it just lets you get through and put your opponent down so this is going to be a great card number nine frontier mastodon a three two for three isn't anything to rate home about but a four three for three would be so the chance to have the four three makes it so your opponent probably would have to team block to put this guy down considering there's a lot of two twos going to be running around Number eight and number seven, Formless Nurturing and Fierce Invocation. A uh, three three for four and a four four for five. Those are pretty solid when it comes to limited gameplay. The fact that these cards can also be other creatures is very significant in that when they flip, they have plus one counters on them and they can be doing extra damage. It puts a lot of pressure on your opponents to have to guess when you attack your four four into their four four if you're gonna flip your card. Also, um, the Fierce Invocation, I believe, is a little bit better because with the increased mana, you get the plus one, and it's gonna be a later game play, and this, is when it'll, this will be when your draws count the most, because you're gonna start the game with seven cards. And when it comes down to where you're all played out and you're top decking, this card will either put a land into play as a four four, which isn't bad, or it'll put a creature into play, starting as a 4-4, four, four, which can get bigger. It's very good for your ferocious triggers. Um, it'll be really great for when you draw your double strike plus trample spells. And um, it'll just help you late game. It'll help you get that bomb that you need. Number six, Feral Crushock. A 5-4 five, for five, 5. Definitely not bad. Obviously, if it was a 5-5 five, five for 5. It would be a much better card. Um, it allows you to make your opponent team block to kill it. It allows you to kill your opponent in four turns. You get this guy out with the heel cutter. They have to block the heel cutter just to make it so they can block this guy. So you might be able to get 10 damage on the board with this guy before they can really do anything. It's all going to depend on how you time your creatures if you bait them into blocking other things. But a 5-4 five, for five, 5, very simply, is a good creature just to attack with in this set, considering everything is small. Number 5, Reach of Shadows. This is simply just a, a very effective removal spell. Instant speed, 5 mana, destroy a creature. If you have anything on board with Prowess, this would be a great card to activate it. Um, you remove a blocker, you get a pump. Very good card. Number four, Hooded Assassin. A 2 3 for 3 isn't terrible in this set, considering a lot of 2 2s are going to be popping up. Um, the chance to be able to destroy a creature that was big enough to block one of your smaller creatures makes it a very decent killer. Like, um, it makes your opponent have to hesitate to attack if they have the two twos, but if you attack into their bigger creatures, you can pop it out and kill it. So um, this is a pretty effective card. Um, post pre-release, I don't think this card will be as good because people expect it. Number three, right into being. This is a very good utility card to help you mid to late game fix your deck. Um, it's three mana for a sorcery. You look at the top two cards of your deck, you put one of those into play as a face down creature, which you can basically morph for its casting cost. 
and you take the other card and you put it either on top of your deck or on the bottom of your deck. So you could take two really bad cards, turn one of them into a creature and put the other one on the bottom of your deck. Or you could take two good cards and set yourself up. One's a creature, one's a spell, put the creature into play. Or if you need more creatures, put the spell into play. And then the next turn you'll have another creature or another spell. So this card allows you great utility, a lot of flexibility. And um, if you're playing control, this will just give you tons of options mid to late game. A very great card. Number two, Dragon Bell Monk. Um, it's a three mana, two, two with vigilance and prowess. Prowess being the ability where if you cast any non-creature spell, it gets a plus one, plus one pump until the end of the turn. Um, playing control, um, you can deny your opponent ab the ability to do things while making your creature bigger, which just seems like a pretty good advantage. So you can attack into a small creature, um play some kind of instant to kill one of their other creatures and after they declare a team block and then you wipe one creature away and your creature is bigger, bigger, big enough to survive the encounter with the other one. Um, you're defending, you could play some kind of instant that's not even related to their creature and get the pump big enough to make your creature bigger and set or survive the, the conflict. Um, the ability of this card to take any spell that you play and make it helpful in defense or offense and the fact that this guy is vigilant so he's attacking and blocking every turn makes this card very flexible and very effective and a high priority target to get killed number one ethereal ambush a five minute instant that gives you two two twos um, right off the top of your library. This is a very good card because if you're in the final stretch of a game, maybe you're on the defense, maybe you're on the offense, and you just want to finish the game. This will take the top two cards, put them directly into play at the end of your opponent's turn. And if those guys are bombs, great. You can flip them. If not, they're just lands. You can leave them as they were. And then you get to draw another card. And... What this does is it allows you to dig deep towards the end of the game to get that bomb you need. If you know you have that creature in there, this will help you get there. Um, this is a great card because it just allows you to have a lot of output real quick. Maybe it'll give you a good crit, maybe it won't, but it'll give you something. <laughs>